Welcome back to the show, everybody. Today, I have three very special guests. They've all been on previous episodes, so definitely go check those out. We're doing Trader Therapy today, where we sit down and discuss the market, discuss common questions that you may have sent me on Instagram or Twitter, and we have a little special session at the end with Kim and Curtin. So, Kim, welcome to the show. James, Thank welcome you. back as well. And Tom, Thank welcome. You. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Absolutely. So, so, James, you want to kick us off? With how with how with how has the market been? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the market has been everybody knows just absolutely insane in these past few weeks. I mean, it's been volatility. I mean, I think for anyone who's been trading for the past you know a couple of years, you probably haven't seen volatility volatility like this in our whole career. Um, you know, and for me, you know, trading has been it's been tough. It's been really it's been going really well, and I've had good days. Uh, but as you guys know, when I spoke in the past, like I'm a small business owner. So given the current state of everything going on in the world, I've been dealing with some intense, you know, kind of stress and pressure, which everybody knows who's been trading a long time, how much that articulates into your trading. So it's kind of caused me to to stray a little bit from my usual and just trading a little scared. Right. But, you know, I, like I said uh, previously, like I got to thank Tom. I mean, Tom has really helped uh, pull me out of that mental and keep me kind of focused going forward. Um, and you know, it's just kind of, that's kind of, I think necessary, but it's been, it's been tough, but it's been really good. And I think everybody who's been trading these past few months knows that, you know, they know what I'm feeling. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I just couldn't agree with James and, you know, more, uh, the past few weeks or like, I don't know, like a month now, like the market is really moving, right? I mean, you have never seen such a volatility like this before. I mean, yeah, you know, as as a trader, it could be a you know great opportunity for you to make a lot of money, but also you could you know if you're wrong, you could end up like losing a lot of money. Maybe your you know your account blown blowing up. And um, you know, I'm a full time trader, and you know, as like like James, I have my side business as well, and I'm located in Europe. And you know, with the Corona thing. We all been hit, right? Uh, you know, my business is closed. Uh, you know, I have my goods in my warehouse and, and so on. And and so, you know, those pressures is, is really adding up to my uh, to my trading as well. And so it's it's you know been quite hard for me. And you know, last like like I think week, uh, like like few days now. And uh, but you know, uh, with James uh, trading with him every day, and and it's it's uh, he's he's really helping and trying to boost up the confidence for, for both of us. Good, man. I, you know, so, it's yeah. not, I, I can't relate in terms of owning a business right now in, in, in the world that was, what's happening. So, but I definitely appreciate you guys sharing that because it's just, it's, it affects a lot of people and it affects a lot of people that I know. And you guys are people that I know I care about. And it's just, it's scary out there. And, and it's something that could really affect your trading. So it's not, you know, hats off to you guys being open and sharing that because there's a lot of traders out there who probably are struggling right now because maybe they're in that similar situation. And it's just, it's the first part is what we got to talk about it, admit it. And that's what we're here to do. And, you know, for myself in trading, I, <laughs> excuse me. Oh my God. Every time I cough, I literally <laughs> feel like people are going to shoot at me. So you like, got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've, been sick. I've been sick, you know, for a while. So I need um, to get off this call. <laughs> yeah, me <laughs> too. Probably yeah. post-traumatic stress. Right, right. Right. I, cough I, now. I get so paranoid. <laughs> anyway, sorry about that. Uh, I've been trading, you know, very scared and mm. it's not scared as in I'm scared, but I know how the market has been. I've been seeing how the market has act. So I know people are emotionally like involved. And so because of that, maybe my targets are smaller. Maybe my risk is tighter. And so I've had a really good March and probably the best months I've had in a long time. And so for me, like it's, I think it's mainly because I've been adapting to like, I've isolated myself from like looking at, you know, comparing myself to others. But I've also just literally have been focusing on my trade, but also being okay with cutting as soon as I get in. Like, it's so weird. Yeah. Like, I used to hate that. I used yeah. to hate getting in and getting out. But yeah. now, like, dude, all my trades, like, this whole month, I've been getting in. And if I, if I see something that looks abnormal, because the whole market is abnormal, right? It's, like, paper it's cuts, so right. different. Yeah. yeah. I'll take, like, yeah. three paper cuts. Yeah. And I'm talking about, like, paper, paper. You know, like, I don't even yeah. care. Yeah. And then when yep. you see that final signal, and then I just load up. 
And so like, That's and then I'll it. take profits yeah. right away because you know how it's been acting, man. I mean, you guys all have seen it. The market has been like, you could be right, really right. And then really wrong, really fast. Yeah. So it's, it's like, it's like really bad right now. So now I'm just like, you I mean, know what? take the profits and just get out of here. So that's, you know, yeah. I, I'm sorry to hear what you guys have been going through, but I, I, we're here to support you. We're all, you know, that's what I like about the trading community. We're all here it, for each yeah, other. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, I think, I think just what you're saying about that support one another, that is what, I'm, that, that's the silver lining to it all for me is the way people are coming through for one another. And I feel like a lot of times the world or the comparisons that we make to other people that we think are successful, like I get emotional just thinking about it. What I'm seeing now are people, nobody can pretend they got it going on. Nobody can pretend right now in this environment that they know what the hell is coming. Nobody. Yep. I don't care how successful you are. I don't care how much coin you got in the bank. Everybody is at risk from potentially losing their life or losing their loved ones, never mind their financial well-being. Yep. So right now, I feel it's this, this like incredible opportunity for all of us to, ad- we have to admit to the vulnerability, there's no denying it, and we can all actually f- discover that all these people we thought that were so confident and so had it going on are just as human as we are, are just as vulnerable as we are, and that allows people to open up their hearts and be there for one another. Like the way James and Tom, you just poke about being there for each other, that is what it's about. Imagine if we had that all the time, how different the world would be, how different trading would be. Like there's enough for everybody. It's when we get into scarcity and fear and terror that we start to shrink, contract, and go into resistance. When we start to say, wow, we're all vulnerable. We all are in this together. There's like more oxygen in the tank. And we can have each other's back in the way you guys are talking about having each other's back. That to me is like, if there's a place to look for the positive news, it's that right now. Absolutely. Look at that. Absolutely. You know, bring it back to the light. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Because we we need any positivity we can get right now. I mean, it's scary. I'm not denying how terrifying this is. I'm a small business owner myself. You know, I have proposals out there now in that very painful place called limbo. And, you know, it's, there is just, but, but everybody's facing this together. You know, Naval, Naval Ravikant put out a tweet this morning that said for the first time in history, the entire world is all fighting and worried about the same exact thing. When yep. was the last time this ever happened? Yeah. Never. No. Never. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think something to be said, you know, now that we're on, I mean, we've kind of been on the coronavirus topic, but, you know, what's, what's been crazy, let's just talk real quick, like quick two, three minutes if we can about the overall market, right? <laughs> like, like SPY, whatever you follow, SPY, Dow Jones. <laughs> I follow yeah. SPY. How how shocked? Who who do you? Any of you guys watch SPY or y'all follow something else? Yeah, I, I'm mostly focused on SPY. Okay, did you, did, are yeah. you were you as shocked as I was? How quickly we got broke three thirty? You know what I'm saying? I was like, you know, yes and no. I mean, the fact is that I know Tom and I talk about this every day. It's just that people right now are so scared, and I think when people are scared, I think the more. Uh, the market kind of, it hates that. The market hates uncertainty and it doesn't know, you know, which direction it's kind of going. So volatile in either direction, like nothing really surprised me at this point. You know, if we spring forward a hundred points, I wouldn't be shocked. But if we tank freaking lower, it wouldn't, it just nothing surprises me right now until we kind of have direction and guidance in the world. I don't think that the markets will either. Yeah. So in that, so I, I guess it would be on the same fence that, I mean, I'm waiting for that, that, that consolidation and then maybe load up, you know, I'm, I'm like thinking long-term. So <laughs> yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm, re- I'm excited, but I feel bad because there's a lot of people out there who's, whose 401k has just got whacked and, it, and it's not, and it may not be over. So it's, it's really, really scary. I think cause my family has 401ks, you know, so I get yeah. that. But, uh, but yeah, so before we, uh, you know, the, the next thing we want to just everyone listening, everyone watching on YouTube, the next thing we're going to get into is the questions from Instagram or Twitter. So if you ever have questions, you send them to any of us. We're always happy to answer them. And if we don't answer them there, if we ever do a session like this, we're going to answer them here. So one of the first questions 
is going to be what, uh, I'm sorry, something we recently learned it, just within the past month. And it, James, if you want to go. Yeah. Um, I think something I learned recently is that no matter what stock it is, no matter what anything, ticker, sector, anything, it's just that it can always go higher. Uh, just that I think we've been seeing stocks at, you know, one day be three dollars and the next day they're up in the 14s or seven to tens or whatever and it's just especially as a short seller just recognizing the fact that uh you know something bow always says is that you uh it, what is it that uh the market what is it? i can't even remember now it's can stay solvent. irrationally longer yeah. than you can stay solvent yeah yeah exactly you know and i love that because it's just i've seen so many great traders kind of take some big hits in the past couple weeks and it's it's just scary especially as like a short bias trader seeing that it just takes one day to kind of lose your ass and that's that's really it one day one trade actually not even you know a day you know just yeah one, one screw up you know anyone else i think i think <laughs> yeah. that's a good point i think that's a good point because a lot of people don't realize that you can blow up a one trade everything you can yeah. lose everything and i've i've done that before in the past and yeah. it's it's the worst. It's it's yeah. literally the worst. And if you and if you lose really really big, and maybe don't blow up, it's the feelings yeah. afterwards that make you blow yeah. up. And it's yeah, and people it's, don't realize yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's like you know if you get stubborn on one ticker, one ticker, and just for some reason you know it's weird. You can have the best risk management in the world, but you could wake up one day and approach it differently for some reason. You know you could get stubborn, you get angry, you get frustrated. Again, what whatever's influencing you outside of trading. And you take that and you put it into your own day and you can, you can blow up and ruin your day. And then it ruins, it can affect your career the long term, you know, or just trying to get back. Because, yeah. You know, all of our hard work for years of trading could be all be wiped in one day. And so like, Absolutely. it's, that's why it's so important for us to have risk management. And, and the one thing I would say I've learned is, is that like, I think the reason yeah. why I have done well this month is because my risk management is, I'm starting to understand what risk management is for me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like risk yep. management is important, but I think what I'm starting to see, and this might sound weird, but I think it's different for everyone, but the overall idea is the same, but how you implement it, what's comfortable for you as a trader is something to be said for because how I handle risk and what I am comfortable with and how <laughs> I like to trade, I'm sure is completely different from you, Tom you james yeah. and soon to be you as well kim just everyone is different yeah exactly yes yeah, so yeah, um, you know i just want to add something here uh, for that um you know recently what i've learned a lot i think it was from the about ig life and what he said really struck me and you know like struck my thinking or everything i mean we, we've been talking about risk management on on the last like uh, the interview right with you and of course i mean risk management is really you know, vital in this game, right? You don't want to be up like 10 days, 1,000 days, I don't know, like a year, and then one day just wipes it out, everything. That's good, right? But not a lot, you know, talk about uh, what risk management is really about is how you can take advantage of those setups. Because, you know, our goal as a trader is to make money, right? I mean, Yes, you could have, you know, good stuffs, you could, you know, have paper cuts, but you need to be able to make money. So, you know, that's what uh, he's been telling, you know, keep doing the same thing. Your process is the most important thing, right? Keep do doing exactly same thing over and over again. Don't change because, you know, you need to, I don't know, like uh, you scared or you need to size up. Now is the time. Today is the time. No. By sticking to your process, that's what makes you, you know, consistently profitable trader. And, you know, that's, I think that's the most important thing to me right now, sticking to my process daily. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think uh, you hit it on the head. I mean, the process now getting back to the basics and understanding the fundamentals and fundamentals, not as fundamentals like research, but the fundamentals of basketball, the fundamentals of baseball, like the yep. fundamentals of trading is what's going to keep us in the game through this hard time. And to be honest, man, this is really going to separate the traders who've been getting lucky and the traders who have been trading well. Exactly. And so this is, this is a, this is a really key, 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 key time right now. 
you know, I, I think people yeah. too, like something that, you know, we talk about daily almost is that, you know, you kind of, like Tom said, you kind of stick with your process and you, you trade kind of what it, you reap, whatever your process gives you. But, you know, day in and day out with the market, you know, you're batting for singles, you know, you're, you're taking a good setups, uh, you're taking what it gives you, but, you know, also right now, something I've really learned and, and to focus on is that when the opportunity is there, those are your times as a trader to really seize, like, you know, seize the opportunity, take advantage, you know, size up and, and, you know, like the first red day setup has been for most traders huge, right? So day in and day out, you know, you're just batting for singles, doing the, the same old thing, boring trading, boring trading is good trading. And then the days like today, the days, you know, like the day Tesla crash, all that stuff. Those are the days you really kind of grab hold of it and you, you take advantage. Absolutely. I think the next question is just to bring that one up is how do you detect a short or long trap? And I think those have happened a lot this month. Yeah. <laughs> These have happened literally on every ticket I've ever every seen. Day. Yeah, every day. There's a long trap or a short trap. And there's probably both on the same ticker multiple throughout the day. It's it's crazy. So um so how do you detect it? Uh I mean, I guess in general, like the kind of the way I've been looking at things, you know, because generally when I'm looking at a, at a, at a chart, at a technical analysis, you know, I'm looking for the chart either for on the short or long side. I'm always a short bias trader, right? So I'm looking for the stock putting in, you know, lower high, lower high, lower high, whatever to feel confident. Um, you know, but what I've kind of been thinking about lately is what everybody's hoping for seems to be the, the wrong answer. You know, like if you're on the same side as like almost every single person thinking like, oh, this cracks this level it's dead, then you're going to get bounced. Uh, like today on uh, WP, uh, TH or whatever it was, you know, same idea. I think everybody expected that when it went red, it was going to just collapse to the 70s the first time. And I mean, I'm not going to lie. I, I was going to slam right when it went red. But, you know, the same thing. Everybody did it and I missed an entry, but it bounced, you know, 30, 40 cents higher. So I think as of right now, it's more of a, a market sentiment thing where if you're on the same side as everybody and you're hoping for the same outcome, you know, you're generally going to get bounces higher or dips lower uh, than you're, you anticipate. At least I think, I think, I yeah. think, uh, I think you're right. I think you're hundred percent right. And, and Tom, what, what did you have something to say about it? Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of info to it, right? I mean, if I mean, I'm like, I'm a short bias trader, so I know where the short trap is, you know, at least I think that I know. <laughs> so um, uh, usually they have like all sort of, uh, you know, signal or the sign that is there for you to, to look at it. Like, for example, it's on SSR, right? Or like a ETB, like easy to borrow. And also the volume is really crowded. And so like, if everyone has the shares to short, right, likely the stock is going to squeeze you at some point. So, and I think the main indicator here that everyone is looking at is view app. And when, you know, whenever stock is like, they went below view app and then they reclaim, I think that's a, you know, big short, short trap. I mean, if you don't cut at view app or just a little bit over that, you are probably going to lose a lot of money. And especially also the time of the day too, you know, depends. Like we have here the zombie row is like after 1030 and, you know, those are, and I think you've seen a lot like the, the teleport candles, uh, you know, usually happens around noon, right? After the zombie time. So that's how you can spot, you know, uh, a trap. Absolutely. The teleport candles will create, will give you uh, like that deer in the headlights. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in a trade and all of a sudden it just goes from a dollar to a dollar thirty in just a second, you're oh shit. That's when you're a like, dollar, I a dollar had a hard, yeah, Dude, hard stop. M L N T, M L N T. I'm thinking about like five dollars <laughs> to six fifty. I'm thinking like, I mean, it's like I, you usually those it. stocks, yeah. Like well, when it's under view app, you think it's over, right? You load the boat, you short that stock, and then when it's you know popping back up, and you know just that. Oh shit! Moment, man. That's it. Well, what I've really been, I've been really paying attention to short, uh, short squeezes a lot this month. And then the, what I've realized, and it doesn't work all the time, but I've learned to accept that. And that is, if I'm in a play and I'm short, and there's a key area to me, and like I draw my lines out, right? And there's a key yep. line that I'm like, all right, I'm like, yes, this line's about to break. <laughs> I'm about to get paid. And if it's, <laughs> let's say the line's three dollars, 
and it breaks three dollars, but it goes to two ninety six, and and it's been trying to break it maybe two two times, three times. It breaks it and immediately reclaims and has some volume behind it, and then holds it for another minute. I'm out, like I'm done because yeah, that's a short squeeze, like because everyone's loaded yeah. that break, and if it reclaims yeah. right away, then I'm telling you right now, more times than not. If you maybe you maybe you get out and it goes down further, but that one time you don't get out and you get in that short squeeze, and you don't use hard stops. Hopefully, you use hard stops. Yep. If you don't, you're about to be in for a big hurt because I got so lucky on on one of my trades where I got out because I just saw that happen. I was like, you know what? Forget it. I'm just out, and I just got out, and then like three minutes later, that thing just skyrocketed. So, and that's been happening a lot lately. And for the long side, I'm, I'm not long biased. I'm short biased, but. One of my key areas of shorting is when I see a, a narrow hit multiple times to get breaked out for the long side, and then it finally breaks out with volume and then gets stuffed. And if that gets yeah. stuffed, what's happening? Same exact thing, reverse what I just said earlier. When three mm-hmm. broke, people are getting trapped up there, and I'm hitting that thing hard, and I'm riding that thing back down because then while we're getting not a short squeeze, we're getting a, a long trap where everyone's now just jumping out of the stock, at, like yep. freaking out. So. That's my I think one of the bigger things that I've, I've noticed too, like, you know, Tom, like Tom's really good at, at hitting stocks out of the open as well. But like one thing I noticed, like if you miss on a short buy, as a short buy trader, if you miss the trade at the open and a stock just tanks and you start to, that's like the most emotional couple minutes of the day, right? Those first couple minutes at the open and you see shorts just slamming the bid as the stock's tanking. Those are times when as a short seller, you have to be able to sit on your hands and say, if I miss the trade, if I miss my entry, I miss the trade. Um, but I think those are also like a, kind of a short trap you know people just yep. slamming the bid trying to get in trying to get in and then it doesn't break a key level and then boom you know right back up to high of day or or whatever um i think that's been pretty prominent lately that's happened a lot actually you're right that's yep. happened so much where if you chase that i mean you know one short trap is the one we talked about earlier where it just squeezes everyone like crazy but this is the other trap where it's fomo right like where you have yeah. fomo and then you get you make your own trap you jump in and then they, they've been all like They've been acting really funny at the open lately, guys. At least for me, they've been yep. acting really funny. Like, may, there's been some tickers that open up with no volume, don't even yep. move for like mm-hmm. a solid minute, and I'm not. And then yep. all of a sudden, boom, picks the direction, just skyrockets. And so, yeah, like, I mean, I feel like yeah, we, we haven't had that like panic pop kind of move in a long time, where like right at the open it just pops up like a level and then kind of stops. I mean, I feel like lately the the sentiment has been more of like a slow death, and then you know, might it will come back later which is why, you know, you can never really take your eye off it because even I'm looking at A2 right now, uh, you know, today it kind of slammed down at the open like 20 cents and everyone kind of slamming, hoping that it goes red or like keeps going lower and lower. It just popped right back up to 180 within minutes. So I think it's just in general right now, it's just more of sitting on hands and, you know, kind of the fishing order idea, you know, letting the, letting this trade come to you instead of trying to slam and uh, you'll be a lot better off. Absolutely. I think, and, and I, I mean, I think that pretty much wraps up that, that question. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Perfect. Well, Kim, it, it's your, your, you have the light. All right. <laughs> so, well, I mean, I think what I'm going to do is just ask Tom and James separately. Like, is there something that you want to bring to this conversation that I could potentially be a contribution to you for? Is there, is there a question or is there a place you feel stuckness or, a place that you're like, yeah, I'm banging into this a lot right now. Hmm. Let me think, Tom, do you have anything you're trying to work on right now? Because I know I do, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I I probably would ask you, you know, some of the few questions sure. regarding like uh, psychology and, and also, it, it's more like, uh, you know, of course, like as a trader right now, I'm still struggling with sizing up, right? And it's not about... Uh, you know my strategy or my edge or whatever that it, that was but it's more like it's like uh, you know i want to level up the right way and how can i be able to do that even even though i know what i'm doing mm-hmm. you know i i know what i need to risk based on my account mm-hmm. but it's still there is you know a barrier that i couldn't you know get over so what do, what do you think the barrier is? Is it fear? Is it uh, caution? Like what, how would you describe the barrier? 
It's, it's, I think it's more like a fear because I know the setup. I know, you know, I could get it right, but I couldn't get in with the, 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 the size that I wanted. And when the stocks, you know, keep, kept going to my directions, you know, and I, I just felt like, man, I, I should have added more. I, I should have, you know, started with this size, right? Mm. But I didn't. Yeah. And so, so how, how, how can you be able to fix that? So the, the concept of should have, I'm going to just tell you in the coaching vernacular, what we call that is shooting on yourself. Yeah. Doesn't feel good, right? <laughs> yeah. Doesn't feel good, which is probably what's going to happen to all those poor people that haven't gotten toilet paper, right? Yeah. <laughs> they're going to be, they're going to be shooting on themselves. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. As soon, as soon as we notice that we didn't do something that, in hindsight, we really wish we could have or did. The first thing I want to say is you want to just notice what the self-talk is like because we're our own greatest you know, enemy. And if we begin to start to have judgment where we're like, we should, you should have done that and you should have done this, then that's going to make you, if anything, go more into a contraction. It's going to make you go more into kind of like defending and protecting yourself. If instead, perhaps, you say to yourself in that moment, huh, I wonder what stopped me. Huh, I wonder what was going on for me. Can you hear the difference between like, why did you do that? Versus, I wonder what that's about. So if you, I'll invite you to consider the next time that happens, meet yourself with some sort of empathy. Meet yourself with some sort of curiosity around what's informing that hesitation. There's, there is something valid behind the hesitation. It doesn't mean it's valid for the rest of your choices, but there's some truth, there's some experience you have where that hesitation served you. And it could be that now it doesn't serve you, it's costing you, but because it once served you, it's hard for us to unhook ourselves from it. So we start with just being curious and saying, hmm, I wonder what was going on for me. And then you'll be able to reflect on what were the reasons that you did it. There probably were, are some. And so they may not be appropriate now, but then at least that'll tie you back to those past moments where doing that actually was a value to you. Does that help? Yeah, makes okay. sense. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, that of- makes me think, I don't know if, if, I, if, you, if you are cool with it, but that really makes me think about Cause I think I get that way too, Tom, where I'm, yeah. but then in the moment, like there's sometimes where maybe there's those cases where I didn't size all the way in yet because it didn't give me that confirmation. And then when it finally gives it to me, it didn't give me that bounce. So then you're, I get frustrated cause I'm like, shit. I yeah, exactly. I mean, it. it's, it's, it's really easier said than done. Mm-hmm. Right. And when you like having a real time executions, that's different. It's really different when you see all those ticks, you know, ups and downs. And even though you have a plan, yes, but you couldn't execute it the way that you want it. You know, that's, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to improve on, yeah. We're, we're all uh, inundated with what is known as gremlins, you know. Rick Carson has a great book called Taming Your Gremlin. Nobody I know gets out of life without a boatload of them. You know, we, the gremlin is that kind of inner saboteur that means well, you know, initially it's trying to keep us safe, but it has a tendency to keep us, you know, kind of here in the circle that it knows. Because as soon as you start to go outside that circle, it feels like, holy crap, I don't know what's going to happen out there. I can't kind of keep this guy safe. It th- these gremlins kind of think they keep us safe. And, it, and they, they did once in our life, but they don't necessarily keep us safe now. They're costly. So that's why we want to start first with curiosity as opposed to judgment on ourselves. Because as soon as we start judging ourselves, you know, it's going to be really hard for us to expand into kind of aha moments because we're, cause we're just like going into yep. protection mode. Yep. How about you, James? Well, Anything for you that? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess the two things for me. So like one of my, like, I don't want to call them downfalls, but I guess like, as you just said, gremlins, right? Is that it's nothing's ever enough. Like I, it's not even necessarily for me as a trader, like the, the dollar value that I see in my P&L at the end of the day. It's more the, the struggle of recognizing like I should have just done better. Um, and that would in turn then kind of translate into me taking, giving back 
gains. Like it's greed, but it's almost like, again, it's, it's tough to call it greed because it's not about making more mm-hmm. money. It's almost like that feeling of like, I, I should have done way better on that one particular trade that I just took, you know? Um, and I guess fighting that feeling and some, somehow overcoming that because that alone is like one of my biggest, you know, problems with my equity curve is that, you know, most days I can make, you know, close to the same amount of money consistently and a lot more, but you know, I, then I get into this mindset of, I should have done better. And that causes me to go back and give back my gains by over trading or, or, you know, that screwing up the trade or doing something to make up for what I should have made in my mind. Yep. Yep. So the concept I'm hearing here is that you, if you have a certain kind of day, you make it mean something about you. Correct. Yeah, I would say so. So see if you can just sit with that for a second and hear if that makes any kind of sense. I mean, does your day day determine who you are? No, of course not. But, but like truly think about it. Does it? I mean, maybe it does for you. I mean, for me as like a trader, like it's like, I not even as a trader, as a business owner, as everything, like my performance, like will generally impact my, like, like psyche and my mentality, especially in like the few minutes after whatever I'm trying to accomplish or whatever is done, it's done. So yeah. that's where my biggest problem is as, as, uh, as like a creator is just that, that those so what, few moments after. So James, I'm going to just interrupt you for a minute and ask you, so yep. what happens when you fail and when you have a shitty day? How so do you feel about fail, yourself? Terrible. You know, I try to overcompensate for any mishaps that have happened, you know, like, like as a trader, like I don't mind taking a, a loss, you know, like a loss is, most losses are planned if it's going to happen. Right. But but, but the trader, losses right. that you don't plan for. I'm talking about yeah. the days when everything goes pear shaped. Yeah. You what know, those what are the happens? Days where, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's yeah. the self talk? So, so those are the days where it's hard for me to kind of pull out of it. You know, it's like those are the days where you know I could be down a couple hundred, and it's just like, oh, you know, nothing's working today. And the next thing I know, I'm down a thousand. To, you know, whatever it is. So it's hard to yeah. pull myself kind of out of that that mentality of just like I need to somehow get better and better until it's like almost like the pain is too much to, to keep going, you know, with the trade or or whatever. Totally. Totally. So it sounds like it's possible. You might be coming from a place of measuring yourself based on what you, how you succeed, right? Which is very understandable in today's world because we're constantly be kind of like indoctrinated and uh, completely immersed in this measuring stick. Like we are constantly having to measure ourselves, if not up against other people that we're with friends with traders or just up against, you know, keeping up with the Joneses is what they say. Right. So there's this concept that somehow comes in early that we have to earn our worthiness. We have to earn our being enough and excuse my French. It fucks us all over pretty badly. Because yep. we are worthy just because we breathe. We don't have to yep. earn our worthiness. But that belief sort of keeps us unconsciously tethered to the end result of, let's say, your trading day. Keeps you tethered to something that you might actually want to get out of, but you don't do that because you feel if you don't have this extra success that you're measuring yourself by or this belief is actually measuring yourself, but then you're not going to, you know, you have, you have no value. Yeah. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. (laughs) For sure. So, you know, this is one of those ones that's like intellectually, it makes sense, but then like, okay, how do you practice it? How do you live, live it? And so just the tangible application of this would be for you to just, See if the next time you have a loss of some sort, it doesn't even have to be a trading loss, anything that you just didn't succeed at, like potentially you're bumping into one now as a small business owner. You have probably some challenges that you may not have a solution for. Mm-hmm. What I would suggest to you is see if you can meet yourself with some empathy for the fact that you're human, James. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you got the memo, but... <laughs> You won't ever not be. No. 
you will not always be able to come up with a solution and you will not always be able to surpass your own goals. And that doesn't necessarily mean anything except if you choose to write that story to mean not enough. You could write another story and that story could look like, wow, blew so many things out of the water and yes, was human on a couple of fronts. Yeah, it's something to practice, right? Something definitely to take every day like in, your, in your trading and try to remind yourself every day that, you know, you might not have hit a home run, but, you know, or your idea of a home run, but that, you know, you are still doing well and trying Correct. to run with and that every day. Yeah. Trading might not be the place you want to take this immediately because the stakes are so high for you. So yeah. I would say take small, little, teeny failures, like, small ones that you could say, huh, could I live with this one? Could I not, you know, beat myself up for this failure? Whatever it might be. Start small in them and just notice, like the answer may be no. I still am feeling a lot of angst having this one mistake, but then at least be curious. There's a lot less attached to it if it's a small stake situation. And then you can kind of walk around it and observe it and be like, wow, look at what I'm making this mean. And even just now having this conversation, you'll just be a little bit more aware and maybe able to just look at that a little bit more neutrally than something really dramatic. I wouldn't take a big one yet on. Just start small. See if you give yourself a little bit of a leash to make a few mistakes and not beat yourself up for it. No, I, I tell you what, guys. I, I you know, I, I, you know, we've been. I want to you know, before we wrap this up. I do want to give you all an opportunity. First off, thank you, Kim, for being here and helping us out because that helps thank me you. out. Just hearing these, like Tom, thank you for being open. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, and James, thank you for being thank open you because both. your questions, both of your questions, are things that I deal with, and both of your questions are things that everybody deals with. And so Everybody. it's just it, very important that, I mean, we're all human. We're all vulnerable. We all make mistakes. And I get where you're coming from, Tom, because I'm trying to size up next month again. And so I appreciate you asking that question. And James, I freaking left a great career and made nothing for two years straight. So I know some kind of fact of how you feel about judging yourself because I judged myself of when I was making because I, I thought I quote unquote made it to the big leagues and I left yeah. it. And then I judged myself making nothing. So I really beat myself up for about a year straight, man. It was horrible. So well, her advice is on point. So I, you know, it's definitely, it's how we were raised, man. It's how we were raised. Like you work so hard to have your own business. You too, Tom, will have your own business and then have your own trading because of probably what your family went through, probably what your dad went through, probably what someone put on you that, you know, is a good thing. You're a hustler, but at the same time, you shouldn't judge yourself. It's hard. It's easier said, but it, yeah, but be careful there, Alex. I just want to I just want to point out like even the concept of we shouldn't judge ourselves is still shooting on ourselves. So this is like a rabbit hole. I'm still learning. <laughs> right? No, of course of course you are. Of course you are, but I'm just trying to be like that um just trying to catch how much it's it's such a part of our life that even the things that we're trying to change we're like, well, I shouldn't do that. So what I would say is get that get that word out of your vocabulary. Get the concept of should or shouldn't out of your vocabulary because it's 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 just not it's not a helpful word. I would like to choose to do X, Y, Z is different, but I should or shouldn't. It's, it's all made up and it's, it's limiting. Understand. Yeah. I, I, I just, you know, completely agree with that. And I just think that we just have to be open to your, to ourselves. you know, at first, I mean, yeah. I'm just, I just wanted to be honest with myself first so that I can see the problem and accept the problem. I, I'm with you. I'm with you, Tom. But here's the trick. The trick to being open and honest with ourselves, we are only going to be willing to do that if we feel, think about like when little children get caught in a lie. Little children are quickly assessing, you know, am I safe? And if mm-hmm. they feel safe, they're going to be much more willing to cop to what they just got. You know, yes, I did steal my sister's toy right? They're not going to admit that if they feel they're going to be beaten up emotionally or physically, right? They're going to lie till their lips are blue. 
So you want to think, if you want to be honest with yourself and you want to look at the parts of yourself maybe that are in the shadows, then you have to be sure to be meeting all of that this, you know, the, the, the darkness within ourselves or the parts of ourselves that we don't really, you know, usually are happy about with love, with empathy, yeah. with a willingness to accept it too, not reject it, not make it wrong, not, not make it feel ashamed. We have to be like, okay, you get to be here too. So it's, it's usually hard for people to be honest with themselves because they haven't learned how to do that first. And you can't yeah. really ask anybody to change unless they feel safe and accepted and not ashamed mm. for being who they are in the first place. So true, yeah, so true. Well, with that great note, uh, I, I want to lead off with Kim. Where can people find you if they ever want to reach out to you? And then go James and then Tom. You guys can find me on the wallstreetcoach.com and you can also find me as a co-host for the Stocks to Trade Steady Trade podcast. Cool. Uh, I am a cool. uh, moderator over at MIC uh, and you can find me at Twitter. Uh, I think my name is underscore or at J Friedlander, I believe. Yeah, um, me too. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, 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 a, I'm, I'm, I'm a mod at MIC as well. And you can find me, you know, Twitter or Instagram under per Tom Diesel. <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Perfect. And you guys already know where I'm at because you're here. So I appreciate you listening <laughs> and y'all joining us and, Everyone else, James, Tom, Kim, thank you guys for being here. Thanks, Thanks for having Alex. me. Appreciate it.